The, I would have thought it's such an important occasion with so many awards to be won and so, so many things to celebrate. Um, we would have had to hire a whole arena, a whole stadium to accommodate everybody. But uh, it's really good to be here. Program director, Harold, really good to be here with you in London and at WTM again. WTM really is such a celebration and testimony to our amazing worldwide tourism industry, to its vibrancy, diversity, and multicultural expression. It's especially good that WTM continues to highlight sustainability in tourism and, of course, is holding World Tourism Day again here in London. It is up to all of us, dear friends, up to all of us to spread the responsible tourism message loudly and clearly and far and wide. You would all know this. There are two big trending topics in the world today receiving growing media attention, climate change and along with that pollution, and, you know, the new phrase that is becoming increasingly prominent, and that is something called over-tourism. Responsible tourism, of course, has to address both of these challenges. Without massively changed behavior, the world stands to destroy itself. And long before then, to growth in tourism might well come to an end. We can avoid this if we get the right messages out and if we get people to take action. As custodians of this planet, we are perilously close to the point where carbon emissions will irreversibly change the symbiotic systems which sustain all life on our planet. Some people think we are already there. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we have 12 years to act to get emissions down to 45% and then to zero by 2050. That is, if we are to limit climate change to one and a half degrees by 2050. If we don't, we will remain on the tragic path of being the architects of our own extinction. The report is sobering. In essence, all of the ways that we create energy govern industries, construct and use buildings, cities, and transit systems, and use land for agriculture and resource extraction will simply have to change. The waste we generate and what we do with it needs to worry us as much as atmospheric pollution. Reducing plastics has to really be prominent in what we do and how we behave. 12.7 million tons of plastic, dear friends. 12.7, not tons, 12.7 million tons of plastic end up in our oceans every year. Scary. Reducing our plastic footprint must be as much part of our human consciousness and endeavors as is the need to reduce our carbon footprint. I think the notion of reducing carbon footprint Footprint is sort of firmly embedded in our consciousness, but, you know, reducing our plastic footprint has to be there equally, and often it is us, the hospitality industry and tourism industry, that contributes to this problem. Just to say, I mean, some of you are hotel owners, some of you are in, many of you are in the industry. Do we really need to drink that cocktail out of a plastic straw? Do we really need to have every bit of bottled water come serve to us in a plastic bottle? Are there other ways of doing things? Of course they are. Of course they are. But it's up to us to ensure that we do change behavior. With respect to carbon emissions, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Poland next month, happening in Poland next month, could be a watershed moment in humankind's history. The tourism industry is both a contributor to and a victim of these irrational planet-destroying practices. We must turn this around and lead the way and demonstrate to millions of tourists worldwide what true sustainable practices are. And more and more tourists, well, we should know that more and more tourists are demanding that our industry address these issues. We must be the change agents and be the example 
and send the right messages to our visitors by practicing and profiling responsible tourism. If tourists see responsible practices in their home away from home, they are much more likely to act in the same way in their own homes. And turning for now to over-tourism, while it has many dimensions, the key issue is host communities feeling overrun, excluded, and crowded out by tourists. It's not everywhere, it's not in every, it's not every country, it's often in parts of countries, parts of cities, but it is becoming a major problem. Responsible tourism requires tourism operators to ensure that communities are consulted and that they do benefit from and are fundamentally integrated into the tourism activities in their neighborhoods, in their areas. More and more tourists, especially the younger generation of tourists, wants us, they want us to pay serious attention to these issues. They demand that of us and we can't disappoint them. And it's also what seasoned travelers are looking for as they aspire to different, more authentic tourism experiences. Tourists don't want to be viewed as unwelcome visitors or as destroyers of cultures, lifestyles, and the environment. They don't want that. They want to feel connected to the people and communities at the destinations that they visit. They want a local destination experience where they participate as a local in wide-ranging activities. They want to feel embraced and welcomed and feel that they are making a positive difference in the lives of local communities. Airbnb, as an example, has found that tourists staying in, in people's homes feel connected to the destination and the experience. And the local host, of course, feels a sense of pride in hosting and benefits directly from some of the tourists' spend. It's a win-win. Now, just a small boast, um, because Harold, you know, you've invited me here. I come from a particular country. So just a small boast about my own country's humble contribution to the global move towards more responsible tourism. South Africa was the first country to include responsible tourism in our national tourism policy. It's a, it's a very, very important part of our national tourism policy, and it should be a very important part of your country's policy as well. Defining it then, this is how we define it. At that time, when we first included it in our policy, we defined it as an approach to the management of tourism which is aimed at maximizing economic, social, and environmental benefits and minimizing costs to de destinations following triple bottom line principles of economic growth, environmental integrity, and social justice. And then, helped by none other than Dr. Harold Goodwin, we developed our own responsible tourism guidelines, which were completed in 2002. You remember that, Harold? Good. Responsible tourism was defined then in Cape Town, alongside the World Summit on Sustainable Development, in the Cape Town de Declaration, and it is now widely accepted and was adopted by the World Travel Market in 2007 for World Responsible Tourism Day. Simply put, it's about making better places for people to live in and better places for people to visit. It has seven tenets, seven very important tenets. Firstly, minimizing negative economic, environmental, and social impacts. Secondly, generating greater economic benefits for local people and enhancing the well-being of host communities, improving working conditions and access to the industry. Thirdly, involving local people in decisions that affect their lives and life changes. Fourthly, making positive contributions to the conservation of natural and cultural heritage, to the maintenance of the world's biodiversity of the world's diversity, including biodiversity. Also, providing more enjoyable experiences for tourists through more meaningful, and co meaningful connections with local people and a greater understanding of local, cultural, social, and environmental issues. Providing access for people with disabilities is equally important and to disadvantaged people. And finally, being culturally sensitive and engendering respect between tourists and hosts, 
and building local pride and confidence. We were, um, so it's not only our boast, we were the second country, in fact, after Brazil, to develop a national minimum standard for responsible tourism, which was launched in September 2011. The standard consists of 41 criteria across four categories. Don't worry, I'm not going to read you the 41 cr criteria. So, um, in essence, uh, dear friends, we have been pioneering, pioneering in responsible tourism for more than 20 years now. We are convinced that responsible tourism is not just a nice thing to do, it is a necessity, an absolute necessity. It's for all of us, and it's about our planet and all the people who live on our planet. It's a way of doing and being that the entire tourism industry and the entire world needs to adopt with urgency. Dear friends, while we have been in some ways pioneers in our own country, we still have a long, long way to go. We continually strive to expand our government programs that address responsible tourism. This includes measures to achieve universal accessibility and incentives for conversions to clean and renewable energy. We have government incentives and subsidies to enable a retrofitting of establishments to make them more energy efficient. We very recently included a subsidy to establishments to convert to more water efficient systems. We are also fortunate to have a raft of NGOs, as you no doubt have in your own countries, who promote responsible tourism in many different ways. But I'm going to mention just one that we have in South Africa, and there are many others. Fair Trade in Tourism South Africa accredits establishments which practice responsible tourism across all dimensions. It has 70 fully accredited members, both small and large, and 24 candidate members. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy to meet their exacting criteria, and it includes good labor practice. There are many others doing outstanding work to, to promote and advance responsible tourism, but whatever we have, it is still not enough. The same applies to your country. We should not be satisfied until every product owner and tourism operator has embraced all aspects of, tourism, of responsible tourism. Sometimes events conspire us and push us to move forward. Cape Town has just experienced an unprecedented drought. The city and the province faced a dual challenge, how to conserve water and how to keep the tourists coming. They adopted a day zero message. You know, if you don't do the right things, on such and such a day, we might well run out of water. And it was aimed at getting locals to conserve water. Unfortunately, though, it had unintended negative consequences on tourism. Many tourists canceled their travel plans to Cape Town. Thankfully, though, the drought is over. The dams are nearly full. And many important lessons have been learned including getting the messaging right. So while it did have a significant impact on tourism, a full-on tourism drought was averted. Innovative and sustainable water practices were developed, and numerous measures to reduce water consumption were implemented, whilst continuing to welcome visitors and provide a great experience. Some of the new normal or the new relationships with water included Local musicians were sponsored to record a two-minute version of hit songs to play in the showers. This won an award for its creative approach. The tourism sector messaging was aligned to a Save Like a Local campaign. Businesses such as Soho Sun in Cape Town, with 12 hotels in Cape Town, invested in desalination plants. Grey water recycling, reverse osmosis plants, and rainwater harvesting systems were introduced by other hotels. Water-free sanitation wipes and soap were installed in bathrooms. Aerated taps became the norm, and there are many other examples. Now the city of Cape Town is hosting international water-related conferences, such as the International Conference on Sanitation, Waste, and Water, which will take place later this month. This is, in fact, the third water event in the last year. Cape Town has now reduced its consumption by more than 50% in just three years. This is a reduction achievement 
that has never been done before, ever. So, from adversity, the city has now become a global leader in best water practice. When Melbourne suffered a water crisis, it took 12 years. I'm not knocking Melbourne, because we all learn from each other, but it took them 12 years to achieve the same water saving. In 2014, just to get you the, ex the extent to which cities are not immune from this, including London itself, in 2014, Sao Paulo nearly ran out of water, and at the height of the crisis, the main reservoir for this city of 20 million people dipped to 3% capacity, and the city had less than 20 days' supply of water left. California has had major water ch shortages, and indeed London is on the BBC's list of 11 cities most likely to run out of water. Not a scare message, but it's on the BBC list. So we all have to be really conscious of how we use water and realize that water is a precious and scarce resource, even in countries that seemingly have lots of rain like you do here in the UK. Responses to every crisis, ladies and gentlemen, is it to every crisis of whatever kind it may be, needs to offer lessons on how to avoid crises and how to best respond in the event of a crisis. And from, from each crisis, we learn lessons so that the next crisis is better managed and better handled. One of the ways to promote responsible tourism practices is by exactly what you are doing, by acknowledging and rewarding good practice through responsible tourism awards. Of course, dear friends, we are proud, South, as South Africa, to have three South African finalists amongst the 18 that have been shortlisted at this year's World Responsible Tourism Awards. I'm quite sure, though, that all the finalists have inspirational stories to share with the world. India has three finalists. The emerging markets are happily and proudly leading the way in this regard. But in fact, I have no doubt that there's some inspiring example in every country in the world. And I think it's very important for us to showcase and highlight these examples and learn the lessons from all of the different initiatives in many countries in the world. So we look forward to next year's African Responsible Tourism Awards, organized by one of our many NGOs working in this field, an NGO called Better Tourism Africa. And this event will happen at the WTM Africa in April in Cape Town. These awards and the nominees help us uncover and celebrate the most inspiring and enduring responsible tourism experiences in Africa. I was going to show you a short video clip of a hotel that is very close to, right close to the city, close to the airport in Cape Town, a hotel called Hotel Verdi. Um, I think time doesn't allow for the video clip, uh, but Hotel Verdi is something that you can Google. It's uh, the only hotel in the world to be in the program called Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, to be platinum certified for both their design and construction and their operation. They also have a six-star rating from the Green Building Council of South Africa, and in 2014, they won the Best City Hotel at the World Responsible Tourism Awards. The awards they have won in many different fields are just too numerous to mention. Wilderness Safari in our country is another totally committed player, acting fully on their vision of the four C's, commerce, conservation, community, and culture. All to contributing, all act to contribute meaningfully to the wildlife and to the conservation of wildlife and the people of Africa. Travel with a purpose is their slogan. So I have highlighted some great examples from my own country. There are many, many inspiring examples from all around the world, including all, all the deserving finalists who are here today. People who have got the message and who are doing the right things. But we need more. It has to be everyone. We will not sustain our industry or this planet if we do not. This is all about our survival. So let us be the industry that leads the world towards sustainable practices. If we can do this, we, win, we, we will ensure that there is a world, a continuing, sustained world with people living in harmony with nature and with each other. 
and a world where people can enjoy and benefit from fulfilling tourism experiences. We really look forward to, thank you very much for me sharing some of this with you, lots more to tell, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's us. It's us who are here, sitting here, who are going to be the change agents, who have to be the change agents, who have to be led by example, inspired by example, and be the example. So Harold, thank you very much for giving me this little opportunity, and in advance, I say congratulations to all of the winners of the awards tonight. Thank you for, this morning. Thank you very much.